If you have an existing map, you can trace over it and then scale it up and get reasonably accurate. It's not as accurate as a survey done by a surveyor, but it can be reasonably useful. Let's do just that with a little example. So if I pick draw and insert a raster image and say add, I've got a photograph here of a map that has been made and drawn by hand. And what I'll do now is insert it into the drawing. I'll specify its insertion point by clicking on the screen and I'll specify the scale also by dragging my pointer. So I'll say, OK, I want it from here and I want it to sit, say, about there. So I'm now looking at my mud map. Now, I could at this, that's just an image file. I could at this stage rotate it if I wish. So just select it and then rotate, click in the middle and minus 90 will rotate it clockwise by 90 degrees. And if we zoom in, we sort of vaguely see some writing. So it's likely that whoever produced this map um, used this orientation that we're looking at here. So now the next step is to trace over the top of uh, information that's in the map. Clearly, there's some straight lines running around the, the boundary there and a filleted curve, so they shouldn't be too hard to trace over. When we've traced over, what we'll do then is scan, sorry, that what we'll do then is scale the drawing. Now, to help you tracing, what I do is pick the color tool and I'll set it up so some nice bright color. It doesn't have to be red. But we're now drawing with red. So if we pick the line command now and we can zoom in to get our start point, say here, and then zoom out for our end point there, we have a line representing that boundary. It's probably a, a footpath, but I can't be sure since I didn't draw the map. We'll repeat the line command simply by right clicking and pick repeat. And we do that. If you wanted a little more accuracy, you could use the offset command to offset. But I'll stick with the line command from here to here and uh, exit from there. Repeat line from there down to there and exit. What I now have to do is put a couple of arcs in. So I'll go on drawing and produce more of the base map. But I'm going to use the techniques that, uh, that you see there. Maybe we will do the arc. So if I zoom in here, draw an arc, we could choose a three-point arc to make it simple. Three-point arc, come down here and we'll say we're going to snap to the end point of that line and the next point will be somewhere around on the arc and then we're going to go to the end point of the other. So we come down here and pick what's called the object snap and snap to the end point. Now we've got a line runs through there, an arc which is joined to the original line, and another one. So I think you can see how you can build up uh, a map based on a scanned image. Just to jump ahead a little, if I measure the distance, so if I went GCAD plus tools distance from, say, we could snap to near that line, but just by clicking on it and going approximately perpendicular. You can see we get 192 units. Now we'll have some idea, or the person who drew this little diagram will have some idea of the width of that part. path. It may well be a meter uh, and we need to scale it by an appropriate factor. So we'll work that out in a moment. When you're drawing your polyline and you come to a corner such as this one, where there's a very sharp turn. It helps a lot if you put quite a number of control points in as you go around the corner. You'll get more accuracy that way. I'll finish or enter, enter closed. It gives me a closed uh, shape there. That's actually not what I wanted to do. So just let me repeat the polyline and I'll move around here. I can separate my vertices when the line is going straight, but when it gets close, like so, we can put them closer together. Now, enter to finish. If I now select that line and select curve fitting, quadratic V spline, and then I'll unselect all, you might just be able to see that you've now got a smoother curve running through there because you put more control points on the sharp turn.
we may be able to see that the paths through this area uh, use a dotted line. And what we'll need to do is to change our line type, the type of line we use to draw that line. But I suggest we put all of these, what probably are softer paths through bushland, put those on a separate layer. To do that, pick the layer tool and click this little button here. And we'll, we'll call it, um, for want of a better name, we'll call them bushland, bushland paths. It's always a good idea to be uh, as meaningful as you can uh, with the names. What I'll do is set my color and I'll choose some sort of um, brown color to distinguish the, the paths. Now, previously we had the drawing color at red. Now what I'm saying is we set drawing color to whatever color we assigned the layer to. What we've forgotten to do is to set the bushland paths as our current layer. And now we can use the polyline command to draw in some polylines representing these paths. Uh, and then all we need to do is change the line type. But we may well be able to do that by changing the line type of the layer. And I'll set that up for you in a moment. Well, what I've done now is go to my bushland paths layer. I've set my color. I've set a line type to a dotted line type. I'll just double click on that and show you that it happens to be called ISO 7W100. Don't take any notice of the name, but it's a dot pattern. I could choose other dot patterns in the list of line types, but for the moment that one will do. And I've set the line weight to 1.4 millimeters. And don't forget we haven't scaled this drawing yet. So, uh, and I also need to set my line type scale that I'm actually drawing with at 50 units. This is by trial and error to get these things right. But of course, once you've got them right for one of your sketch drawings, you don't need to change them. You can just uh, set a, a template and work from that. So in theory, we should now be able to pick the polyline command and let's concentrate on this area. So from some probably information pad there, we go from here, along here, there, there, there. And you may be able to see already that the polyline is being drawn with a different line type pattern and a series of dots are appearing. So we can enter from there and then repeat the polyline again and come and follow the path that was marked on the map. Now I've chosen to go down from that point, but you might choose to head off in a different direction entirely. By pressing on the wheel of the mouse, you can pan the drawing as you're working here. I'll right click now and select enter to finish. And I'll go on and put the dotted paths in and uh, I'll show you the end result in a moment. Now it's time to remove the scanned image. Let's do that by going to the menu for layers. And if you remember, we put the photograph on layer zero, so we just turn it off and that will reveal our map. And what it tells me, I think, is that the line type scale of all of these dotted lines is, is rather too heavy in comparison to the, the base map. That's relatively easy to change just by selecting. We'll just pick that little group there, line type scale is 50. And we probably need to, oh, it's actually thickness, isn't it, that we need to uh, lower. So it's line weight. And we are running at uh, what? Let me look. Um, let's I'll just escape from there, pick one line. And it's line weight is being done by layer, of course. So we don't have to select individual ones. It's always be wise to be a little careful. And our line weight is 1.4. So let's bring that back to say 0.7 and we should get a much lighter looking graph. There we go, all in one hit. Again, you might argue that the dot distance of the dot is not quite right. And uh, you might want them a little closer together. And you could pick a line type scale of uh, you could change that value of 50 to let's go to 75 
and we'll click away from there and we'll see the result that takes it much wider so we want a lower value than 50 so if we go to 25 and click away and back and unselect all there we are there's our path so you can see there's some there's an element of experimentation that is required as you are working these things through notice that as i zoom out you get a heavy line there but that can be fixed in the presentation area which we don't have time to talk about right now what we do want to do is to scale the drawing appropriately if i use my tools and say what's the distance from this side of the path to the other you can see it's very close to to 100 units so if i just zoom out so that path running through there reads 100 drawing units now we want this to relate to the real world which that path is a meter wide so we need to scale this drawing by a factor of 10 to do that we just wrap a box around the whole lot and then right click and say scale as a base point 0 comma 0 and a scale factor of 10 and now when we go zoom extents and we zoom in on that path and we measure from one side of the path to the other we get the scale factor 938 so we're getting up towards the one meter so it's relatively accurate and gives us uh, the right sort of information and as you will see when you come to plot you can get the drawing to plot out and look quite nice and get the scaling correct so we've made a little base map we're relatively confident about its sizing and its accuracy and all from just a scanned image of a, of a hand-drawn base map. It's not perfect CAD, but it's not too bad.